And I'm Joel Jamison. And I'm Howie Clark. And this week's episode of Eight Weeks Out TV, we're back with more from Dr. Jerry Ramajita. And, you know, really he's one of the top therapists out there. And he's one of those behind the scenes guys that a lot of people don't know about because he's busy treating athletes. He's not, uh, you know, he's not making cool internet videos like us most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually out there treating people. Yeah, he's actually doing something. Uh, he, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing the seeing from uh, week one to week two how, I mean, we all know the body compensates, but seeing the way he attacks it is pretty awesome. And in this week's uh, episode, when he's checking out the hips, yep. uh, I think that applies to everybody. It does. I mean, whether you're a combat athlete, runner, I mean, really doesn't matter. Your hips are involved, baseball player, your hips are involved in pretty much everything. And so he's going to uh, go ahead and explain to us kind of how he evaluates the hips. And he's going to give us a simple way that you can uh, check your hips out as well, a couple exercises based on that. So let's check it out. So the first thing we're going to do um, is just on the table, just a very easy assessment looking at the, the freedom of internal rotation. The reason I do this is that degree of movement, it should be just a nice smooth movement and you should get anywhere from you know, 10 to 20 degrees of nice easy quality internal rotation. If it blocks, which is often the case, just gives you an idea to look at the uh, structures like TFL, uh, IT band, uh, because their uh, fiber orientation will, if excessively tight, will, will lead to a restriction in that internal rotation in this position. And always important to do a comparison bilaterally. So you get a little bit of a, a block there, and we know already that you have a bit of a hip, a hip tight, a tight hip. <laughs> so, and we just go and check. Actually, your right side is tighter. Okay. So the next thing we would look at is just the quality of internal and external rotation of the hip. Um, external rotation, if you look at orthopedic manuals, is, is anywhere to 45 degrees. You're kind of at 45 degrees. I like to see, <laughs> I like to see a little bit more. A uh, good indicator of the tension either in the glutes, uh, piriformis, the external rotators. And then we look at internal rotation. Now, how he's got restricted internal rotation. Uh, again, orthopedically, they say anywhere to 35 degrees. Howie's got about 10. Uh, and we know, based on Howie's injury history, he had the ankle, he's got restriction in the hip, uh, which doesn't bode well for the knee. And I know you have some knee issues, and some knee surgery. Okay, so those give you an idea of internal external rotation. Internal, again, on the table. Now I want to look at hip extension because it's another, it's a big part in terms of power generation and push off. The lack of internal rotation is an issue because as an individual pushes off, the hip has to be able to internally rotate to allow the pelvis to move over that leg of support and, and, and push off. Um, if you don't have that internal rotation, there's a tendency to almost avoid hip extension which diminishes glute recruitment. And we know that the glute max is the largest muscle in the body, and for a reason, it generates most of our power to push off. If you're not getting from neutral to a few degrees of extension, you don't get efficient recruitment of the glute Otherwise max. Otherwise, you're slow. Yeah, or you're using something else like the quads. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to have you lie on your side. And the other issue is, is if if you start to lack hip extension, the body's going to try to find it in other areas, the most common being the lumbar spine. So a lot of us have seen athletes where when they're moving, you see significant increase in the lordosis in the curvature of the spine, and that is kind of a, a red flag, not a red flag, but an indication typically that they're not getting the motion at the hip, and that can cause issues with the low back. So I'm going to have how we kind of support the leg, and then we want them kind of right on their hip, the spine in neutral. He's kind of got his head forward. We'll leave him alone for now. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to hold the leg. And then I put my hand in the lumbar spine so I can tell. So as I bring him into extension, his lumbar spine's already going into extension. And we're still at 10 degrees of flexion. We want to be able to get to neutral or 10 to 15 degrees of extension with, with a good quality of extension and not seeing significant movement at the lumbar spine. We should be able to get that. Again, if that's not happening, we're looking at the tension of the hip flexor potentially or the rec fem. Um, and we can tell in Howie's case, when we bring him back, 
and we get that first moment of lumbar extension, if we come in and feel, I mean, his rec fem is very, very tight there, we're going to show an exercise uh, to help in improving an athlete's uh, hip extension. So that's kind of the last of the, the typical ones. That yeah, so you said there's all sort of evaluation they can do on their own and, and exercise they can do after that, right? Exactly. The, both the evaluation and the stretch, um, the stretch itself can serve as an evaluation and we have a separate one. Yeah, all right, well, let's, let's take a look at that and see how athletes themselves can, can take a look at this area and what they can do about it. So we've just done an assessment of the hip. Uh, we've done sideline and looking at extension. Now we're just doing a simple test that you can do with your guys uh, on a table or bench. So we're just gonna have how we come to the end. So he kind of just sits on the edge. He's gonna bring one knee toward his chest, grab it, and then he's gonna kind of let himself lay back. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at the degree of extension in the hip. What we also want to get an idea of, I'm going to reach on this side for the camera, but you want to kind of get your hand and see the degree of extension in the lumbar spine because some people have quite a bit, which will indicate that even with the femur in this position, that's pu putting a lot of tension onto the spine. In this position, I'm just going to kind of get a good sense of what the end feel is like and how much further he can go, and that's what we've got is <laughs> what he's got. So, you know, might be an indication that we want to do some work in terms of uh, stretching in this area. And you always want to check bilaterally, right versus left, see if you've got any significant differences. Uh, asymmetry is a big indicator of potential problems. Okay, so in Howie's case, we know we've got a little bit of tension in extension, hip extension, that indicates rec fem and potentially psoas are tight. Uh, we're gonna move to the exercise that you can do to work on that. Okay, so we just spoke about hip extension and restriction related to rec fem and potentially the psoas. This is an exercise designed to kind of address both. Going to get, we know we've had how he's set up here, so he knows this height is good for him on the ball in terms of being able to feel a comfortable stretch in an upright posture without generating too much lumbar extension, and that's important. So what we're going to do here, once he's in this position, how he kind of sh tell, show where you feel that stretch. On the front the side. Okay, and he's in a, the hips are straight, foot's up there well, and then I'm just going to have him do a gentle contraction of the glute, which pushes the hip forward, and that's going to get more rec fem and, and potentially psoas as well. He's going to hold that anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, but it's a comfortable stretch. You, particularly the anterior part of the hip, if you overstretch or you become too aggressive with it, it can actually irritate anything, anyone that has an issue in the front of the hip. So it wants to be a good controlled position like this, good posture, and just a gentle contraction, 30 seconds to a minute, then relax. You can do each side two to three times. Is that something you do? How often would you do that? Um, again, if it's gentle and it's just a comfortable stretch, you can do that, you can do that daily. Awesome. And then what, what sort of changes, how often would you remeasure, uh, do the assessment again to see what the effects have ever been? Uh, just whatever tends to work into your program. Uh, if you have assessments once a week or once every couple of weeks, it just becomes part of their mobility plan. Really, the biggest thing is putting it all together into a comprehensive you know, evaluation and program, right? Yeah, it's part of a, a collective to where you're addressing all the issues that you do find putting it together into a program so that they're working on all the, the areas of restriction that uh, are notable. Most coaches and athletes really don't understand what conditioning is or how to develop effective training programs to include it. And the truth is that conditioning is often the difference between winning and losing. You know, conditioning seems to be given short shrift and nobody speaks about it with confidence like he does. I created the BioForce Certified Conditioning Coach Course to solve all these problems and more. I've done tons of other certifications. Nobody does this. I've put over 15 years of work and understanding to give coaches a step-by-step -step guide to maximize performance for each and every athlete. I'm taking a lot with me, so I, I couldn't write fast enough. So. It was great. It really fit in well with my schedule. Joel's information is so valuable. With my clients, the results that I got were amazing. I never thought possible. This is the key to winning. This is the key to success. Just beyond my imagination. <laughs>